Hello, my name is Sophie Kajmanian. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to demonstrate dart manipulations for you. There are different manipulation techniques. Today we're going to work on slash and spread method. Why do we manipulate darts? In order for us to get new exciting styles, we change the placement of darts by using different techniques. As I mentioned, we're doing slash and spread to come up with new styles. Let's say this is my pattern where the dart is at the waist. So when I stitch this dart, I'm going to come up with this kind of style. And let's assume I want to change the design and I want to move this dart into the center front waistline. So the dart will be moving there like this. So my bodice is going to look like that. I can move this dart into the French dart position. For instance, right here, you see, my dart forms itself at the French dart position and changes the style. I can move to the side straight position, into the armhole, into the shoulder, neckline, center front, wherever I want to. Here on this chart, you can see that your front bodice has a single dart at the waistline. Now, that waistline dart can be moved into center front waist, center front bust, center front neck, mid neck, mid shoulder, shoulder tip, and mid armhole, straight side position, and from straight side position down to the waistline, the French dart could be put anywhere you want to. So pretty much all the darts that will be locating right here could be called French darts. I'm going to start working with my block front bodice. In case you don't have one, you can go to the end of Helen Armstrong's pattern making book. There is a block. There, at the end of the book, take this one with a single dart at the waistline and copy this, stretch the size for 100% and you will have the block looking like mine. So let's start manipulating. I placed my block against one of the lines on the dotted paper. Then, by holding my pencil 90 degree to my paper, I copied all my block and I should not forget to mark my apex, so I did. And be careful with your notches and corners. And put that aside. Then you can draft the dart legs that right now go to the apex. Anytime we do construction, manipulation, we're going to use this dart shape that will go to the apex. Let's cut the black off of the paper. So I have my block cut already. Now I need to choose a location of the dart that I want to bring this dart into. Let's say I want to go to the mid shoulder position. I'm going to mark at the mid shoulder and connect that line, which is my slash line. So let's call this a slash line to the apex. So my intention is to move this dart from the waist position to the mid shoulder. That's why I put the line there. In order for me to be able to manipulate this dart into the shoulder, I need, first of all, cut your dart off. See, this is cut. And then I am going to slash my line towards the apex. And these steps, by the way, are the same for every, every dart that you're going to play with or work with. After cutting the dart off and slashing the line, we need to close the dart. So when we close the dart, 
it opens up right there automatically. So I manipulated my dart from the waistline to the shoulder. You will try not to cut through the tip of the dart in case it did, like in my case, I will gently put it back again. Please note that your papers here should not jump on top of each other or should not stay away from each other. They should be touching gently like that. Okay, so the tips are the same like this and I'm going to tape my pattern on another piece of dotted paper. In this case, I'm using brown paper because I want you to be able to see my new shape that opened in there, my dart. And soon I'm going to add my seam allowances so I, you would be able to visually, actually clearly see what's going to happen here. Before I go on with my pattern and finish it, I would like to bring something to your attention that is crucial to understand. You see, I started from the waistline dart and I manipulated this dart into my shoulder. Right now, before I moved my dart from here, my pattern looks like this. So if I cut this pattern off of the fabric and make a garment, it is going to have a pretty nice fit. So the technique that we are using to, to manipulate the dart to the shoulder is going to be so precise that it will not affect on the fit. It would look just like that, but the dart is going to be at the shoulder. I'm going to pull the tip of this dart backwards one inch because if I stitch my dart like this, I'm going to come up with a cone shape, pointy shape, and we don't want that. We want the shape to be dome shape. So we pull the apex for an inch backwards and then place a dot right equally away from the legs of this dart. And then we're going to draft the dart legs precisely from the same point to that new point and the other side also. Now you see, here I came up with my dart point. Now, so this dart doesn't have a dart tail. So what I need to do is to fold this dart to create one. This is a vertical dart. So the dart is going to be folded towards the center front, meaning intake of the dart. So here's how you do it. You see, this is the intake of the dart, meaning inside of the dart should go towards the front. All vertical darts that you come up with should be folded that way. And when you crease that side of the dart leg, you hold your fingertip right at the point of the dart and then you fold your dart to be closed just like this when the dart point precisely should go to the point. Now, as you can see, I'm not crushing my pattern, let it be. So, okay, take a look again. You see the dart leg should go straight to the point of the dart and fold it like this. When you hold your fingertip at the point of the dart, it doesn't let the dart to go on. It should not continue because this is going to be sewn just like this. Now we're going to place a piece of tape right here. So the next step is going to be double checking to see if this side that my dart came to is broken or not. At this point, my shoulder, because that's a possibility. You see, wherever the dart moved from and wherever the dart went to, and doesn't matter the position, you have always to, to check if that side got affected. For instance, here, take a look. If I place my ruler at the shoulder, point to the point, neckline to the shoulder tip and draft a straight line. You can see that I have a very, very slight breakage right there. Would it be visible on my garment? Yes. So I should always smooth out that particular side where my dart went into. Now, after I do that, I'm going to start adding seam allowance here since my paper is sitting folded. And I'm going to put half an inch seam allowance at the shoulder and cut my paper 
like this. So when I open up, you see I the dart tail formed by itself. I didn't come up with this shape. It just came up like that on its own just because I fold the paper the way I did. Let's continue adding seam allowances. At the neckline, my seam allowance is going to be one fourth. At the armhole, my intention is to attach a sleeve later on to this pattern. Therefore, my seam allowance is half an inch. Otherwise, if I were using facing, I will be doing only one fourth. And then half an inch seam allowance at the side seam. Now at the waistline. I have mentioned previously that wherever the dart moves from also can be broken. So I'm double checking it. In order for you to fix your waistline, which is slightly broken, you see, you have like a pointy shape. So I'm going to place my dart, the tail towards the center front, and I'm going to blend and smooth the waistline right in that broken area. So I had a small, very tiny, small bump, but I have to fix it. Then after fixing the bump, I am going to add my half an inch seam allowance. Let's smooth out the seam allowances before we cut at the curves. And at the center front, I don't have a seam allowance because this is going to be on fold. So let's cut. So my pattern is correct just the way it came out. But let me show you one more step further. If you fold your dart, when you fold your dart, the fold gets into the neckline and as you can see here, I have like three layers of paper, which is going to be like three layers of fabric going into the neckline, which is not a good thing. Therefore, what we do is we cut the dart, the fabric or the, or the paper that is trapped between the legs of the dart. So this dart is not very heavy and bulky. How do you do that then? Okay, so what I do is I measure half an inch from the this leg of the dart and half an inch from the opposite leg and I am going to eliminate all this paper so that bulk is removed from the shoulder. So let's cut. I have created seam allowances to my dart legs so it's not very bulky. Now let's finish this pattern. After adding seam allowances we need to notch this piece. The center front neckline gets a notch. Again, you're notching with your notcher, not mar marker. I'm just using marker so it's more visible through the screen. Okay, at the neckline, a notch is optional. The lock dart legs are always notched precisely at the point. Now at the shoulder, the notch is placed like that. That is showing half inch shoulder seam allowance. And here is the notch that I'm copying for the um, arm side for the sleeve attachment. The side seam up and down notches will go like that. And center front waistline notch will be lengthwise that direction. So notch them with your notcher. Like this. Four, three. Another very important feature that we have to place on the pattern before we say it's done. That's the grain line that is placed about an inch from the center front. This is my center front. Then we have to mark the punch hole for sewing instruction. The punch hole will go half an inch down from the dart point right there. Here, let me measure it for you half an inch down from the dart tip. It's right there where we actually punch and circle. For more detailed description, refer to my important features of pattern making 
on YouTube, you can learn about that. And I have to label my pattern. This is my front bodice. Let's get used to the na name of the dart with shoulder or mid shoulder dart. And then this is size eight. And we're going to cut one because my, the pattern is unfold. finished as I mentioned before um, it should not affect on the fit of the garment so as you can see it fits the same exact way it's kind of more crisp because of my brown paper being underneath and being crispier than a dotted paper as I mentioned before you don't have to put brown paper underneath you can put another dotted paper as a background for this pattern my suggestion would be to try another sample with horizontal direction of darts either the dart that goes to the center bust position or it goes to the straight side position or goes to the fringe position so you can understand clearly how this uh, method is used so i have demonstrated slash and spread method for dart manipulation with one dart now i'm going to show you how to Move the dart, meanwhile, divide it by two. Five, four, three. So the same way, we're repeating all the steps. Place it, place your block on a paper, copy it. Don't forget your apex. Then draft the dart legs. Now, instead of one slash line, we're going to have two slash lines. For instance, one is going to come from mid armhole, the other is going to go to the center front waistline, for instance. You choose whatever darts you want to work with and then connect that new position to the apex and the apex to the other position. So now I have two slash lines. And I'm going to slash both of them towards the apex. But first of all, we're going to cut the block off of the paper. Let's cut the dart. And slash the lines. Please note that if you forget to cut the dart or you cut, forget to cut the slash lines, your dart is not going to move. It is going to stay where it is. First secure your center front part of the block now. So I was right here. Now, I have to divide this dart by two. So I'm going to open this dart halfway, you see? only half of it here you can visually also see if my dart originally was here you can actually even mark let's say here's my midway in the dart so i'm going to move this part this much and let's secure that one dart you see half of the dart is still here half went to this part now, if I close this dart completely, then my half dart will open at the big armhole position, like this. From this point on, the steps are exactly the same like we used during our first uh, dart manipulation technique. But again, quickly I'm repeating. So one inch down from the apex for our dart tip position. Again, shortening the dart so we get dome shape bust. 
and fold the darts to get their tails. By the way, these darts are small darts. We're not going to cut out the dart intake, okay? We only cut when we have a single huge dart. So don't bother to cut them. Again, fold, this is a vertical dart. I am going to be folding my intake of the dart towards the center front. You see, it goes towards the center front. Place some temporary tapes here. And here I can add my seam allowance after fixing my waistline little bump. So there's no similar at the center front. Therefore, I kept my dart intake folded and cut my center front without the seam allowance. So I came up with this funny dart tail at the neckline. We have one quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I came to the armhole where my second dart is. It is kind of like a vertical dart. Sometimes mid armhole darts can be like horizontal darts. If it was a horizontal dart, then I would fold the dart towards the waistline, towards down, not towards the center front. Okay, so I'm thinking that in my case here, my dart is again a vertical dart. So fold the tip and fold it. Don't crush the paper, just leave it like this. A temporary piece of tape. Double check to see if your armhole got broken because you have a new dart here. So I'm blending and I'm going to add half an inch seam allowance right here. Fixing. Sometimes these dart tails can surprise us the way they come out. I deliberately chose this position because I follow the rules. It's a vertical dart. I fold it towards the center front, but I came up this funny dart tail that couldn't stay in there. So there, what should I do? I should break the rule, meaning I should be folding my dart the opposite direction. I'm going to send it towards the waistline. You see that goes towards the waistline. And I hold it, just fold it like that, and carefully cut this with my armhole seam allowance and blend it gently into half an inch seam allowance so my dart tail becomes like this. When I'm notching, can you see sometimes the dart tails can be pointy in other words, notch shape. So I don't have to notch that point. Meanwhile, I'm notching the other leg and I should not be confused about my armhole notch right there and my up and down notches. And here I have the same situation. Can you see both of these dart legs are pointy so I'm not notching them.
So I'm done with my two dart manipulation in slash and spread technique for you. And I placed my pattern on the form for you to see that even if I mingled with that dart, divided by two, move them into different direction, my pattern shape didn't change. The fit is the same. It's not compromised. Again, I believe that you need to do two samples to practice. So it kind of sinks into your brain and you remember how to do it. It's important. Five, four, three. Before I finish my presentation for you, I would like to give you one little uh, tip. Let's assume I want to come up with a dress or a blouse that has contrast colors here. Let's say this part of the garment is one color of fabric and this is another fabric. In this case, what I could do, I could remove the darts, slash this off of this, this other piece, add seam allowances in here, and I will have two pieces together that will be connected with a style line. So this simple technique of dart manipulation can give you an idea for a completely different style line with no darts but style lines. So this adds up to your creativity when it comes to pattern making connected with a design. So we have worked with uh, dart manipulation today in slash and spread technique in one dart and two dart series. I wish you good luck uh, in your work. Again, I'm Sophie Kachmanian. I had the pleasure of doing this demonstration for you. I wish you would just continue doing your patterns. Please uh, like my videos or subscribe for them and also visit my jasminegstudio.com for draping projects. See you next time.